Thank you. So my uh, the question I have is: Is it possible to combine movement, pleasure, epidural electrical stimulation, and rehabilitation? I will speak a little bit about epidural electrical stimulation. So I'm not a scientist who did uh, research about epidural electrical stimulation, but I'm the monkey used by scientists to do some research. So in the end of my presentation, please don't ask me scientist question, but monkey question. Okay, so I will be able to give you some answer. So who I am, I'm automotive engineer. I'm lecturer at the Bern University of Applied Science in Biel, that means in Switzerland. And before my accident, I did a lot of sports, seven hours a week, cycling, running, swimming, and uh, touring ski, bodybuilding, climbing. Um, in 2013, I had my accident. I was road. Uh, my accident was on uh, during a MTB ride, mountain bike ride. I broke the C6 and C7. I was bro uh, the helicopter brought me to the hospital of Notville. Hospital of Notville is this one, and you can see here that's they are doing here in this building the research. And that's the hospital. Today they did it bigger. You have another part of the building who was built in this part. So uh, back to home, that means back to work. I spent nine months in the hospital. I'm quadriplegic. And I did a lot of training in the hospital. But coming back home, I plan a lot of exercise to do at home. That's just a short part of my exercise. Because I'm an engineer, I like to record everything. That means uh, I knew everything about my body after just trying to increase my strength, to increase my, uh, to do everything by myself. And uh, recording means also that I could know uh, what happens in my body, like what kind of exercise I was doing. And I was also recording when I was going to the toilet. So I knew exactly what kind of exercise helps me to go to the toilet. And for me, it was really important. For you, it means nothing. But for the people who are in the wheelchair, it means something. So coming home, it, also, it has also to do with home training. I have here some, it's just a sample of what I was doing and what I'm doing today at home. So today I'm doing two hours of exercise every day, okay? I did until 37 hours a week of exercise just to see what happens in my body. So I was alone, training alone, training different type of exercises, uh, going on the internet, using the help of my family, my daughter, my son, my wife. I was just trying different movement, different type of simulation, Standing in the beginning was quite hardcore, and after I tried to do to use different type of uh, movement, just to understand how my body was uh, acting. I'm used today 40 minutes twice a week FES. Here I'm trying to stand to sit to stand with elastic. Uh, in the beginning I need elastic, and today I don't need any elastic anymore to do my sit to stand exercise, cycling with different position, and also walking outside of my home. So I did all the device, device you are looking here is done by myself. And the, the PT behind me is my wife. And uh, so that's my home training. I learned a lot about myself. But one thing what's really, really boring for someone who is in a wheelchair is when you need the help of someone and doing just walking 10 meters back 10 meters, 10 meters back 10 meters. It's really, really boring. And uh, the one other thing is like, today I'm walking like one and a half hour nonstop on a treadmill. And I can tell you it's the most boring things to do in your life. So one thing I was always thinking is to go outside to do a nice movement, but outside, in freedom. So I did my first prototype of 
bicycle here is the trike and as you can see you have cranks for the arms and you have also cranks for the legs and that means they are connected together but they are not just connected together in a stupid manner they are connected together in a way that I'm using the walking patterns that means left hand forward right legs forward and turning like this okay like the walking pattern I'm using it and for this I have also the help of an electrical motor here behind that's like a bicycle with an electrical motor, motor an e-bike so it worked so well that we founded in 2016 Go By Yourself it's a small uh, startup factory and we built five different trikes and we did a short proof of concept test that means we are not doctors we are not uh, scientists who make research but we did a short proof of concept you can see here we took two hemiplegic they are uh, hemiplegic because of stroke uh, two quadriplegic one paraplegic and one cerebral palsy he had uh, when he born he had some problems what kind of uh, test did we do it was quite easy in the beginning we did a test with walking, sit to stand, concuni. If they were able to walk, they were walking, okay? So we did this test in the beginning, and after we gave them the trike for six weeks, just six weeks. We didn't ask them to do to ride every day or minimum of riding. We just told them it will be nice if you can ride the trike for three, uh, something like three times a week, okay? That was, that was it. And in the end of the six weeks, we asked them to do the same test. That means the same walking test. So you will see here, uh, the difference before after is the only thing we have done. So you can see it, we have measured it with the time also. And because we are not specialists, you can uh, judge by yourself what happens here. It's Sonat, Sonat has his birth problem. is walking faster. Now you have someone who had a stroke. He didn't want to ride the trike. He told us if we ride it once a week, you can be happy. And now you can see Claude. He had a stroke also. And he, uh, it's interesting because on the left side you, need, you can see he needs a stick and he will lose his balance, no? On the right side he don't need his stick anymore. And that's just six weeks of riding the trike. So we'll come back with Mario because he's someone very interesting and here we have Benoit who is set up register. We also did a short test of uh, handling and control of the trike because some people didn't believe they could manage it, but you can see six weeks after is really not, not a problem. What's interesting here, I was talking about uh, Philippe, who told us if I ride a trike once a week, you can be happy. He became the trike and he will, in the end of the six week, we call him or his wife and ask him to have a meeting to take the trike back and his wife was just telling us in the on the phone and telling and said what will I do if I give the trike back and we say why are you telling us that and she just tell us that Philip was using the trike every day see also twice a day because he was so happy to ride it and in six weeks, he did 700 kilometers. And a story, a short story about Mario. Mario is paraplegic. He also did 700 kilometers. But what's interesting, when he was in the hospital, six months in the hospital, he could, because he's incomplete, he could push on the leg press 25 kilograms. And after training three times a week with a physiotherapist, one year, three times a week with a physiotherapist, he went from 25 to 35 kilograms. We gave him the trike for six weeks. 
and he went from 35 to 60 kilograms just riding the trike and that without physiotherapist but with pleasure. Today he can push more than 90 kilograms on the leg press and he went last month to take the screw he had on his spinal cord to take them back. And today he has a feeling is coming from the hips down on his legs. That something happens, we don't know why, we don't know, we are not doctors, that's not our problem, but that's a proof of concept, something happens just by doing the right movement with pleasure. Okay? That's... The bike is an FBS bike. No, it's completely free. Okay, so, so turning, uh, turning the bike and all that, you can pull a lot by the loaders, right? No, the turning, I mean, you are controlling when you want to go forward. You have just to turn the pedals, but you have to, because the motor is with a torque sensor. That means if you are pushing less, it will help you less. If you are pushing hard, it will help you more. And what's interesting is always uh, the legs and the arms are, you ca they turn together. And if you have, if you have um, your own control on your legs, you will automatically use your legs to go forward. I cannot hold, uh, in the same case. Yeah, so I guess I'm getting at is, um, it's the arms that are doing the starting work, and then you, can, then you have the motor that can take over to, to make sure you can keep going. Yeah, so, exactly. But without FES. And that's without FES. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, and you can see the improvement in the people. But there are, all the people who had improvement here are people who are uh, incomplete. That means they have some sure, feeling, sure. they can do something, right, okay? Right, right. Got that, got okay. That. What I, my testimony is I have some feeling in my legs. And riding the trike for hours, I mean the first 10 minutes it makes nothing. But after a short time, I have, sometimes I had the feeling my legs were really doing something. Right. And that's amazing. It was just by, you know also the, the people who are using virtual reality, yes. okay? But that's not virtual reality. Your legs are moving and you see them moving. And when you want go, to go forward, all the body is automatically doing the right movement. And that's something interesting. And that's the story. It's a part of the story, short story about the trike. No, about the ES. ES, um, I began in 2070 to be part of this study. This study is run by uh, just Professor Justin Block and Professor Grégoire Courtin. I don't know if you remember last year, they brought it on the BBC and everywhere, that three guys in Switzerland were walking again. I'm one of them. So I'm, that means I have this um, electrode here in my, on my spinal cord and I have this device under my skin here. Um, I have some video, I will put them now, uh, but they are not mine video, they are videos from the team of Gregor 14. I hope it will work nice, no? <coughs> Sorry for the noise, it should go away. I don't know if it works, if it doesn't we work. We developed targeted neurotechnologies and implemented a clinical study aimed at restoring walking in patients with spinal cord injury. We first established a gait rehabilitation platform, including a robotic suspension system and a wireless environment for recording kinematics and muscle activity. We aimed at delivering electrical stimulation trains that target the spinal cord regions involved in the production of muscle activity underlying walking in healthy individuals. To map this muscle activity onto the lumbosacral spinal cord, we projected the electromyographic activity onto the standard anatomical locations of motor neuron pools. We obtained a spatiotemporal map of motor neuron activation that included a succession of three hotspots underlying weight acceptance, propulsion, and swing. We aimed at targeting these hotspots to facilitate walking after spinal cord injury. 
Three individuals were implanted with an electrode paddle array targeting the lumbosacral spinal cord. To optimize the location of the array, we sent electrical pulses to the implanted electrodes and recorded the evoked muscle responses in the legs, allowing us to guide the placement of the array. After recovering from the surgery, we identified optimal electrode configurations to target the three hotspots underlying the activation of leg motor neurons during walking. To determine the timing of the stimulation, we monitored the kinematics of attempted movements in real time to identify the gait events underlying the activation of the three hotspots in healthy individuals. These detections triggered the targeted stimulation protocols that facilitated leg movement during walking. So, sorry for the noise. That's the Lyon noise. <laughs> so, um, the next movie, also the next movie from the, the team of Gregoire, is me walking in the lab. So, it's much better explained by the, this uh, woman voice than mine, so that's why I will put the noise back. <laughs> Sorry for that. Without stimulation, participant P3, who exhibited flaccid motor complete paralysis, was unable to perform any steps over ground. Spatiotemporal stimulation immediately restored the sequence of motor neuron activation underlying walking in healthy individuals, which enabled the participant to walk over ground. The paddle array displays the electrode configurations targeting the posterior roots projecting to the three hotspots underlying walking. So, end of the noise. Um, That was me walking in the beginning of the therapy, okay? I have the next movie, a short movie, about me. Uh, one of the first time when I could work, uh, when I tried to walk without nobody. And uh, for me, it was an ama amazing moment. You can see it here. Uh, sorry. Here. It's with body weight support, of course but I was trying to move without nobody, without crutches and everything. And now it's quite easy to think what happens in my brain because it was happening this before the study. When I came in the study, I was always speaking to the team about my trike and was talking to them. It would be nice to combine both of them together. So one evening, they came, it was late in the evening, they came to the the startup, and six of them, including Gregor Putin, they came to the company, and that was the first time when they fixed both of them together. And uh, you can see here is Fabian. He will send the stimulation in my uh, on my epidural stimulation, and you will see my legs pushing hard from this moment. No, tack. You can see it. And look at his face when he realized it worked. It was really the first moment when we could combine both of them together. And why I was really happy because one of the things where I was really happy is that they took time to come to the company and test something. And I realized something that Scientists, you can see on the TV, they have also not just a brain to do some scientific research, but to collaborate together. And that was for me an amazing moment. And so you can find the research 
on Nature magazine 2018. And it's quite easy to understand what they were doing. It's exactly the same than with the FES. They tried to find the movement of the crank and to stimulate on the right moment to have this uh, movement or this uh, stimulation in the, in the, in the body. Uh, what's the future, future for me? The future for me is really to combine different type of exercise with different devices, with different simulation to make a therapy. Because every exercise has his strengths and his weakness. But we have to understand it. So with the trike, what's interesting is we have an exercise that's a movement between legs and arms. We have a device, the trike, and we can combine different type of simulation. When I, I'm talking to you today about epidemiological simulation, but on this same trike we did with my friend Kenneth. Where is Kenneth? We did, uh, Kenneth is there behind. Uh, it's my colleague in the school and uh, the university. We did also uh, functional electrical stimulation on this device. And both of them together, I mean, the device and the stimulation can make a therapy. And for me, it's really important. And that means this ID, it's an ID, and behind you have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. What happens to my stomach when I'm moving my arms who are active with my legs who are passive. For you it means nothing but for us in a wheelchair if I need less medication for my stomach it will be better. What happens to my brain when I'm moving my legs also when they are passive? What happens in my brain? What happens in my, for my health, what happens, what, what would be the best timing for my legs and arms when I'm incomplete my, with my legs? I have a lot of questions. And all these questions I need, I'm not a scientist, but I need people who answer it, it to me. So I was thinking about a trike study, like written here, and I asked, for that, I needed a device where I can measure the angle, the force from my arms and legs. I need this device to make research. So I went to my colleague, Kenneth, here present, and asked him, could you do this for me? And Kenneth told me yes. And after I went to the University of Lausanne and asked Jerome, another one who I know, I asked him, could you look for me the best timing of the movement and to do a study with your students. And he told me, yes, I will do it for you. And after I went to the hospital of Notwild, one of the biggest in Switzerland about spinal cord, and I asked them, is it possible to do health and mobility study, what we have done with, as a proof of concept with some people? Could you do it in a professional manner with your doctors? And they told me, yes, we will do it. And after I went to Grégoire Courtin and asked him, you know, I have a big question. What happens in my brain when we are doing this movement? Could you do a study for me? He told me, yes, I can do this. And that's something for me amazing because when I'm speaking about that with colleagues who are scientists, they told me, do you really want that all this group work together if they, do you want that the, all this group work together on the same subject? It's just impossible. And today I can say it's possible because we will meet us next week, or in two weeks for the third time, and we are working together on different subject, on, on the same subject but different aspects. And for me it's quite like a, a, not an achievement because perhaps a an achievement, for, but for the first step. And I, would, I want to do much more things with this, all these guys together. And coming back to the question, is, is it possible to combine movement, pleasure, epidural electrical simulation and rehabilitation? For me, it's clear. The answer is yes. And 
you can see it. Well, 25 kilometers per hour. Don't heal more than 60 though. That was it. any pain I mean about the, the operation it was okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem about the operation. Okay, and when you now now when you when you did your electrical stimulation with the FES with Kenneth and the epidural, did you do that at the same time? No no. I tried it uh, at the same time but just to understand <laughs> you have two different type of uh, type of epidural epidural electrical stimulation, you have the tonic one and the phasic one. And uh, the American, uh, like uh, Dr. Arkema, the Mayo Clinic, they worked on uh, tonic stimulation. And Grégoire Courtin is one of the, I think is uh, the only one who works on phasic stimulation. That means you have just the stimulation when you need it. In the movement of cycling, you have just the stimulation of each muscles when you need it, like FES. Okay, not like something like a level of stimulation, always the same. Okay. And I used the ES stimulation, tonic stimulation with the FES stimulation right. both together. I used it at home just to test it, yeah. if it works or not. We tested it in the lab also to walk, but it was not easy. And, what, and so the tonic, with the tonic, not the phasic, um, what, did you feel that it was better uh, than just with FES alone? Or... No. The other question is, um, I get my way, I got let other people, but um, we have a problem with the FES in the sense that uh, the muscle fatigues because we're exciting the entire packet of, uh, of, uh, of, muscle. of muscle types, and so it fatigues very quickly. Um, do you have the same type of thing when you're in your epidural uh, with the um, with the phasic, the one you're working during? Is that fatigue? Uh, yeah. Is there issues with fatigue also? It's the same. I would say it's the same. You have also the fatigue because the muscle is activated. But I think one of the most important thing is also training. Some of, the, of you have sure. uh, talked about training. You need training. But in my case, because I have some ideas, I'm training so much and I have some different feeling with FES, EES and the, walking, riding the trike, or doing seat to stand. We, we, we tested a lot of different things. And that's my opinion that you don't have to, if you want to do rehabilitation, you don't have always to use the full capacity of FES or EES to do the movement. Sometimes it's better to use just in a endurance phase, like doing something for one hour. Take the example of the bicycle. Don't try to use really the force to do the movement with the FES because sometimes a scientist is just doing everything to have like 10 kilograms of force or 10 newtons of force on the pedal, but you don't need it perhaps. You need much less just to have the feeling to push it. And by doing this movement repetitively, you will do rehabilitation. Not going on the fatigue side, but going on the feeling side, really. I feel it, I feel it, and you repeat this many times. Yeah. So, so, uh, when did you get the, uh, the operation, the surgery? Surgery was in 2017. And uh, the effect stays the same of the thorough stimulation? So, the, does it, do you feel any changes in the effects in the muscle contractions that should be happening. Just to, to fix everything uh, that we are clear between us, I'm the worst patient they had. 
That means in the in the in the I mean in the injury level. Mm -hmm. That means what they have seen with me is not m so much like for the other. But today, when I'm going there and I'm working, yesterday I was wo walking there. Or yes, walking there. Uh, I needed just 20 kilograms of body weight support. In the beginning, I, I needed much more than 20 kilograms. And 20 kilograms, I have really my two feet on the floor and I have all my, I mean, uh, the rest of my body weight really on the, my, my feet or my legs. And so I could see inc uh, increase of my strength, increase of my own control. I mean, when I'm walking, trying to do longer steps, shorter steps, that's all the things I could see today in my uh, epidural, uh, of, I'm in my training in, uh, in the lab. Thank you. Sorry, uh, one. I have a question on the epidural stimulation. I mean, it's posterior root stimulation, which is the sensory side. Exactly. So is my understanding correct that you're not actually, you're somehow facilitating your own volitional activation of the muscle? Not the muscle they are stimulating like the reflex muscles on the uh, they are taking the roots of the sensitive mm -hmm. but they stimulate it in a like a reflex like when you are doing like here on your knee and your knee is moving but then the action is coming from you volitionally uh, so initially the action comes from the stimulation but they are the idea is that you want to do something it's coming from the brain down and the, the stimulation is initiating the, the, initiate the movement. And so both together, they try to find new routes to the nerves to control your own movement. Yeah? Do you feel that your muscles are bigger now? They are bigger, but uh, I mean, they are, you can see it, the, the difference from the beginning and today. My quadri, like quadriceps, my glutes, my wife tells me that my glutes are bigger, so... <laughs> so. so but the related question there, and that's why I've always been uh, wondering, is the epidural stimulation like what Gregor is doing, plus FES, I would think there would be an added effect there. I would, you know, I would think that, that that could help, no? You don't think so, sir? No, I don't think it wouldn't. Just wow. because the way the FES works, you could have essentially, I think in some ways, a bombardment in terms of when you stimulate, you're stimulating the peripheral nerve. Okay. So the, the, the stimulation goes both orthodromically to the muscle okay. and antidromically back to the nervous system. Okay. Any stimulation you have coming from that reflex loop that, that was described, they're going to collide and cancel each other out. Or could they collide and then and, and they could cancel, but could you get the timing where it, um, it reinforces instead of canceling? And that's, that's, that's I, I realize what you're saying with it. Uh, yeah, if I am looking at the yang, you would be at the yang. Right, right. I appreciate that the stimulation yeah. is not on all the time. Right. For when the stimulation is not on, you're getting some activation. Yeah, because he's doing, he's doing uh, phasic, I guess is what it's called, but not on all the time. And so they're basically doing the same thing. He's you, you gotten in sync. Harmonized, you would think you could. Mm -hmm. You're still the same problem. Once you use the skin surface stimulation, you are firing all the muscle in a reverse order. So you may well get a better result from the the uh, stimulation. As soon as you add the left stimulation on the surface, you still got the same old problem uh, added. Because, that's that's true. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's why uh, some are working on time from phasic. The groups that are in the are on phasic are are building like Reggie Edgerton. Uh, and people on the strength teams, but once you have the skin surface stem, you can't let it look true. You know it's actually counteractive is being done, but you don't get a real boost from it. Because you're still not the same, I'm recruiting everything to keep problems that you had when you weren't getting it. Uh, yeah. So I guess the advantage for the FPS thing would simply be the increase in muscle mass, which you got a bigger gun, and so now when you do the space, it, it's going to be better just because you've got more, more muscle With the mass. difference of what Reggie Edgerton is trying to do, which is to use uh, his epidural stimulation, but a little bit of skin surface at the right. Not so much to cause so much fatigue, but a little bit. Right. We don't know the results of that yet. Okay, he's trying to do that. Yeah, 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 he's trying to do that. Yeah, okay. Anything, just, you know, forget it.
just remember that the, that the skin surface stimulus, as you described it, does activate a large amount of sensory fibers as well. That's right. Yeah. So, so it's not just the you know, autodromic motor. You get a autodromic <coughs> sensory in terms of the, the, the fibers, in terms of the very similar fibers, stimulation of the large family in one of these But also they can get a cutaneous stimulation as well. That's, that's, that's not that, that's okay. Well, that's good. Well, it may yeah. not be okay. I think it makes yeah, you aware. Because you could have... Harkina has said that she believes that that, that both sensory information actually is more powerful than right. the right. Which point. goes back to his observation, which is that just doing it and imagining it, it reinforces his, uh, probably his, his, his internal volitionary uh, abilities, basically, because of the extra century, uh, which means we should add uh, uh, virtual reality to it, too, in, uh, in addition to that, too. But I, I think that's my opinion. On that. I, I'm working really in this direction is to know where is the strength of every stimulation. You told about, I'm using like this, I mean, I have the stimulation FES at home and use it between two or three times a week, every time 40 minutes, with different uh, frequency, different uh, manner. And this, my idea is to reinfor reinforce my muscles with the FES and use the EES by doing something functional like walking because it's really interesting to use it in the walking manner and what's something what's really interesting also in the ES is you can much more easier use it in your daily life you don't need everything to fix it on your body when you want to go cycling it don't, don't take two hours until you have everything on yourself and uh, it's much easier to use so you can do a program like I'm doing, I'm, uh, this summer I was on the lake with the canoe, okay, with the kayak. And my idea is to try to do, to use the EES to reinforce my position when I'm doing canoe. So I can have different programs and it's waterproof. So you can just put it, tonic stimulation, better ability to, to stand in your canoe and so you can go on the lake. And this time you use it, and you ben uh, the benefit you had, it was using a device for therapy and pleasure outside to do something. And after the same system, another um, uh, program, and you can go outside and ride the bicycle. And so that will be really interesting to use it in your daily life. And FES more to train your muscles to be bigger, for perhaps. And so, for me, it's really to try to understand the movement, the stimulation, and what can you do in your daily life. So I think we'll keep the next question for uh, the dinner tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Sebastian. <laughs>